I seem to remember coming on here less than two months ago, keep me honest here, but talking about when Samoa Joe and others were released by WWE, how it was in bad form and really bad taste, you know, especially when you think about the state of the world at the time, you know, still relatively locked down, uh, combined with the fact that WWE was experiencing a period of record profits. You're then turning around and you're releasing people, which you didn't fucking need to do. You don't have to do. It's just pure, unadulterated, old school greed. And not the type of business model that others should be emulating. No, that doesn't mean you can never get rid of anybody, especially if they're not doing their job well, etc. But to sit there and use some type of crutch like, oh, it's budget cuts and streamlining and bullshit. You don't have to do that. And yet, no surprise, WWE will do what most cocksucking organizations will do, and that's using people to balance the sheets. The problem is, the WWE doesn't need to balance their damn balance sheets. They are fine, they are more than fine from a financial standpoint. On-screen product, we must separate all that diarrhea and garbage, but talking about the financials, the financials are really sound. They are good right now. Really good. Record profit levels. It's an incredibly distasteful look, in my opinion, to be sitting there and then releasing talent. And you also heard about the recent reports about them, you know, consolidating some of their organization and changing the role of Kevin Dunn and others, getting rid of a bunch of people in the office. And again, it's like, you're doing this for the fuck all of it. You're doing this when you don't have to. You're doing this and in many cases probably invested years of effort and energy and resources into these people, both in terms of the on-screen talent and the office folks, the behind the scenes folks, and you're just gonna treat them like a disposable commodity is not a business model that any major company should aspire to. It is not. It's a sign of a company that lacks vision. It's a sign of a company that lacks Strong leadership, most importantly of all, it represents a company that lacks a belief and value of its people over products, processes, and profits. And eventually those chickens come home to roost. Best believe that. So you had heard some reports that WWE is getting ready to release some more folks, including some potentially big names, and that hammer has dropped today. Just saw this a little bit ago, and sir, many of you have as well. I'm reading straight from the WWE's own tweet that WWE has come to terms on the releases of Braun Strowman, Aleister Black, Lana, Murphy, Buddy Murphy, Ruby Riot, and Santana Garrett. WWE wishes them the best in all of their future endeavors. So even though you're at a time of record profits, even though you released several people from the offices, you released several people off of the roster less than two months ago. Now we come back and you're streamlining even more. You're getting rid of people to balance your profits when you don't fucking need to. And I know some of you that are going to have the sheepest type of mentality of, oh, you can't be so kumbaya when it comes to the people. Look at the end of the day. The best companies have the best people, not the best processes because it's the best people that drive the best processes, the best products, and the best results. That's a fact. And we need to get out of this old school mentality of every time you want to change something about your company, you don't cut the people at the very, very top, you cut the people down below. That's fucking ridiculous. It's stupid, it's dated, and we need to get out of this mindset. It's a different world now. But when you look at some of these names, like a, somebody like a Santana Gear, and I mean this is no disrespect, but when you think about time and energy and investment into characters, Santana Garrett is a nothing in the grand scheme of things. She just is. Like I said, that might sound harsh, but it is what it is. Easily replaceable. You look at somebody like a Ruby Riot and you say, this is somebody who's been around for a few years. I don't really get the appeal for her, but some people seem to like her. But, you know, it's like, this is somebody that just wrestled at WrestleMania a couple months ago and now you're releasing her. It seems unnecessary. Was Ruby Riot's downside guarantee or her salary, her yearly compensation, was that really going to make a difference for WWE? Of course it's fucking not. It's a damn drop in the bucket and yet that didn't stop them. 
Murphy was somebody that was prominently featured on TV in some degree in 2020. And now we turn around and he's fucking gone. But the three that really surprised me the most, one, Lana. Like this is somebody that you have invested a lot of energy and effort and resources into over the years. And now you're just, she's gone? Like at what point in time do you stop making the sorry ass excuses about balancing the books and everything else and you look at this and say, this is a really dumb dick decision in terms of ROI, return on investment. It's not like Lana has done nothing in your company. It's not like Lana has never been a factor. Lana has been in featured prominent spots and roles off and on throughout the years. Like that's time and energy, exposure, investment that you could have put into other talent, but you put into her. And then by releasing her, you get none of that back now. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And then you look at Alistair Black. Not the biggest fan. I, I digress. I give you that. But you just were repackaging him. You were just doing something with him. Didn't he just cost Big E a shot at the Intercontinental title? And now in the middle of this repackaging and this rebranding and the vignettes and everything else, you just fucking releasing him? This is the type of thing that points to that there is no rhyme or reason or long-term vision or strategy for this. This is just names on a ledger and you're just fucking crossing them off. That's all this is. Because if you were sitting there and saying, hey, you were going to cut Aleister Black all along, you wouldn't have been featuring Aleister Black in prime spots on television for weeks doing these vignettes and every fucking thing else. You just wouldn't have. Who the hell would? That makes no goddamn sense. If you're anticipating the potential future need to release people, which the WWE clearly did not have the need to release people they've just chosen to because they're greedy cocksuckers, namely Vince, you wouldn't have done this. Like, you would take somebody that's not featured on television prominently. You would take somebody that hasn't been on in a couple of months. You wouldn't sit there and randomly release somebody like an Aleister fucking Black. That makes no goddamn sense. Especially when you are actually investing in their character. Who in the hell does this? And then the biggest striking, most surprising one for myself, and I think for everybody, is Braun Strowman. This is a former world champion. This is a guy that you have pushed and forced and pounded into a top-like spot for the past few years. One of those legit monster dudes that you don't have many of on your freaking roster. You've now taken this guy who less than two months ago, mind you, was in a WrestleMania match against a fucking McMahon. And now at the beginning of June... You're starting to swoon for some reason and you release Braun Strowman. That also, out of all of these, makes absolutely the least amount of fucking sense. Like these different ones here, you can say everybody's replaceable and it is true. Everybody is replaceable. But when you look at the amount of energy and time and effort and resources and money poured into Braun Strowman, his character, his development, is being prominently featured on Raw and SmackDown over the past several years, you cannot possibly make a good business justification for releasing him today. You just can't. If you say, well, maybe he requested his fucking release. You know what? I'm going to give you a couple months off, but you're not fucking going anywhere. Like, who does this? And if you're sitting there waiting for the other shoe to drop, or the shoe to drop on the other foot, whatever the fuck you want to say, and that, oh, WWE, maybe they're positioning themselves to sell or something else is going on. Why wouldn't you want to keep the people that you've invested the most in as part of that selling? That makes no goddamn sense on God's green earth. You released a dude. <laughs> you released a dude that you had even made a world champion. You had him beat people like fucking Goldberg. Like, that's not a small thing. You had him beat a fucking McMahon at WrestleMania. Care Bear or not. Nobody can sit there and look at this and think this makes any damn sense. Especially when you think about it just sheerly from a cock-blocking, petty Vince competitive standpoint. 
You're basically taking these guys and saying, here you go, AEW, have fucking Adam, take your choice. You know Lana's going to end up in AEW. Logically makes sense. You would assume Aleister Black will probably get a home there at some point. And you would certainly think that somebody's going to come calling for Braun freaking Strowman because this is one of the more notable wrestlers that WWE had that had years of primetime television focus and exposure and featuring. Like this was a guy that you were sending out to do press junkets, promoting and hyping up SmackDown. He was showing up at football games and showing up at baseball games for Christ's sake. Like, how can you possibly justify this from a business standpoint? If you look at all of these releases combined, what are you saving, one to two million dollars a year? Again, drop in the fucking bucket at a time that you're making record profits. When you're talking about how much money you invested in them and that you will never be able to get back now, that number is infinitely larger, especially when you talk about Braun Strowman and Lana, you've invested a lot in them over the years. It's not a small amount. Time is money. So that time you put into them cost you money with the hope that you would make it back and then some. Why would you cut off that faucet? I mean, just astoundingly stupid to me. So one thing about the releases in April, those are astoundingly stupid and, you know, sticks in my crawl for a variety of reasons. But this one here, this set today, just seems even more egregious. You've already made cuts. You did not need to make any more. You should not need to make any more if you were going to sell WWE. Bullshit. I don't buy that. To say that, hey, this is part of budget cuts because we need it. Bullshit. You can't say that. You can't make that argument when you're experiencing record goddamn profits. And especially when you're talking about getting ready to go on the road in a couple of months in front of fans again, why would you want to deplete your roster of some notable names that might actually have people come to see them? I don't think Braun Strowman's a big fucking draw, but you get what I'm saying here. It just absolutely makes no goddamn sense. And if you're going to use that business argument, I've already talked about how stupid that is. You wouldn't have been doing this shit with Aleister Black and actually featuring him regularly on TV just to turn around and release him. If there was any type of vision or strategy or plan here, there isn't. There wasn't. Stop giving Vince and the WWE the benefit of the doubt like there was. Because if there was, they wouldn't be releasing some of the people that were on this goddamn list. It's another perfect example of corporate greed run amok and the senility um, disconnection from reality, greed and stupidity now, of Vincent K. McMahon. And before you sit there and say, whoa, what the hell would you know? He's a billionaire. Let me, let me put it to you this way. Vince McMahon may be a billionaire in net worth, but if you really think about it, how great of a businessman is somebody when he's worth maybe a billion or a billion and a half when he could be worth five or ten billion? Right? Right? So he's achieving maybe a quarter to a third of what his potential earning power, his potential net worth could be? Why in the fuck would you praise that? And when you see shit like this and you see decisions like this, they absolutely are not praiseworthy at all. This company deserves to be taken to task for this pointless, unnecessary, and stupid bullshit.